Hello, thank you for taking the time to watch this video summary of our equity analyst report on Secor Holdings. My name is Eric Pangrass, and with the hard work of my fellow group members, Tyler Denenberg, Edward Point, and Daniel Verb, I am going to present our findings. Based on our analysis of the company and various industries that Secor is involved in, my fellow analysts and I have established a 12-month target price of $59, an investment rating of market perform. In this video, I'm going to start off by giving a brief company overview, followed by a segment tour of Secor Holdings. Next, I will discuss the current industry of Secor's business segments, as well as a peer analysis of Secor's top competitors. Then, I will talk about Secor's financial performance, stock price, and the current state of the company. Finally, I will explain our investment thesis, company valuation, future outlook, and investment rating moving forward. Welcome to Secor Holdings. Secor Holdings, listed on the New York Stock Exchange as ticker symbol CKH, was founded in 1989 by Charles Fabrican when he bought Nikor Marine and renamed it Secor. Based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Secor owns, operates, invests in, and markets equipment primarily in the offshore oil and gas, shipping, and logistics industries. Secor also maintains a sizable business venture in corn processing. Secor went public in December of 1992. As of December 31st, 2015, Secor operates 173 vessels and 1,557 barges. Secor operates in Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Mexico, Latin and Central America, Asia, and the United States, where it earns the majority of its revenue. Secor is split into four main business segments offshore marine services, inland river services, shipping services, and Illinois corn processing. Secor also maintains many other auxiliary activities, such as emergency crisis services and investments. Secor Marine, also referred to as offshore marine service, is Secor's largest business segment, comprising about 35% of total operating revenue. 66% of Secor Marine revenue is earned internationally. Like Secor, Secor Marine has a variety of services, including transport personnel, platform supply, offshore accommodation, and maintenance and repair support. Secor Marine owns and operates a diversified fleet of 173 towing, supply, support, and platform vessels. Inland River Services accounts for 21% of Secor's operating revenue, over 99% of which is earned domestically. Secor's Inland River Services owns, operates, invests in, and markets river transportation equipment, primarily used for moving agricultural and industrial commodities and chemical and petrochemical products on U.S. and South American Inland River waterways. In addition to its primary barge business, Inland River Services also owns, operates, and invests in high-speed, multimodal terminal facilities for both dry and liquid commodities. This segment also provides a broad range of services, including machine shop, gear, and engine repairs, and the repair and dry docking of barges and towboats at strategic locations on the U.S. Inland River waterways. SCF Marine and SCF Services are the two main groups of Secor's Inland River Services. Secor's shipping services account for 21% of operating revenue, 85% of which is earned domestically. The primary company of Secor's shipping services segment is Secor Ocean Transport Incorporated, which provides its customers with safe, efficient, and reliable marine transportation solutions. The shipping services also provide deep sea, Caribbean roll-on, roll-off, liner, and brake bulk shipping. Secor's Shipping Services operates and leases U.S. flag petroleum and chemical carriers, tugboats, and ocean tugs and liquid tank barges. Secor's 70% interest in Illinois Corn Processing, or ICP for short, generates about 16% of Secor's operating revenue. This revenue segment is domestic. ICP produces, stores, and distributes a wide variety of high-quality alcohol used in the food, industrial, and petrochemical industries, as well as fuel-grade ethanol. This diverse production capability 
differentiates ICP from other fuel ethanol plants and gives ICP a wide customer base. Secor operates primarily in the oil and gas services industry through its offshore marine, inland river, and shipping services segments. Secor also operates in the renewables and agriculture industries through its Illinois corn processing segment. The oil and gas services industry has contracted significantly with oil prices dropping from nearly $120 a barrel in 2014 to the mid-20s in early 2016. The depressed oil and gas services industry can be explained by the offshore rigs. The number of U.S. offshore rigs peaked at 443 in November 2014, but has since declined by 142 rigs, or 33%. Consequently, industry offshore fleet utilization fell from 90% to 75%, with industry day rates for new contracts between 8% and 35% for comparable rigs. Secor's fleet utilization has decreased from 81% to 72% and its average day rates are down 16%. Secor, due to its highly diversified company structure, has placed itself in a unique set of industries. The company's largest segment contributed to earnings is offshore marine services. Three corporations that most closely compare to Secor, which are based on factors such as size, growth, and operational area, are Tidewater, Gulfmark Offshore, and Hornbeck Offshore Services. Secor differentiates itself from these companies through its diversified holdings. Secor's market cap is greater than all three of its competitors combined, and Secor has a noticeably higher price to earnings ratio than its fellow competitors. However, as shown through return on equity, Hornbeck has the greatest returns of its peer group. Regardless, Secor shows positive gains on equity when compared to Tidewater and Gulfmark, which both have negative returns. Secor generates 78% of its revenue and 62% of earnings from its oil and gas services segment. Annual revenue in 2015 is down $161.1 million from 2014 annual revenue. While the decrease in revenue may seem discouraging, Secor has been able to remain sustainable through stable profits in international markets as well as conservative spending efforts in great economic conditions. To forecast revenues, we performed a multiple regression analysis for the offshore marine segment and applied the regression to forecast revenues for this segment for the eight quarters from 2016 to 2017. From 2018 to 2025, based partly on historical growth with consideration to the cyclical nature of the business, we applied a 2% growth rate for the offshore marine segment. For the other three main segments, we applied a 2% growth rate from 2016 to 2025. The R-square is extremely important in considering the accuracy of the regression. In simplistic terms, it describes the accuracy of future forecasts based on reliable assumptions of revenue drivers. We found an accuracy rate of 95.6%. To establish a 12-month target price for Secor, we analyzed a free cash flow to firm analysis and used relative peer multiples. During our analysis, we honed in on the price to book value ratio of Secor. After the downturn in oil prices in 2009 to 2010, Secor's price to book ratio averaged 0.8. When oil prices jumped up to their highest point of about $120 a barrel in early 2014, 
Secor had a price to book ratio of 1.35. Because oil prices are extremely low compared to recent years, we use the company's 0.8 price to book ratio of 2010 levels compared to the forecasted book value of equity of $1.24 billion at the end of the target period to establish a 12-month target price of $59, a rating of market perform. We would like to thank you again for watching this presentation, and thank you to all Tulane faculty and c management with their help in the creation of this equity analyst report. Thank you.